morning. Good morning, everyone. Good to have you all, Tyler, and all of those in Cyberland. We are glad you are able to join us on this morning. Morning that we have come to worship the Lord, and we thank you for joining us. Our call to worship is from Psalm 34, 1 to 3. We will be standing as we sing, as we read. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. That's the word of the Lord. Can you say? Amen. 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 Our opening and prayer song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. After which, we we'll invite Pastor Jackson to come out and say, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ 
that Lord God you will look favorably upon us Lord as a nation Father, even as this pandemic continues to ravage our world, I pray, Lord God, that you will have mercy upon us. Pray, Father God, that your spirit of wisdom, Lord, will attend the citizens of this country. And Lord God, we will abide by the protocols, Lord God, that will keep us safe. Father, I pray for those who mourn, Lord God, their mourning losses. Father God, they are not even able to grieve properly or to have closure. Father, I pray for them, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit of comfort rest, remain, and abide with them. That, Lord God, you will be the lifter up of their head. Father God, I pray, Lord, for those who are in the hospital. Those who, Lord God, have contracted the virus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, you will take them through. Safely, Lord. Father God, that you will visit them. In that hospital, Lord. And that they will understand, Lord God, that when they have gotten back on their feet, that it was all because of you, because of your mercy and your grace, and that they will give you glory, Lord. Father God, I want to pray, Lord God, for the economic situation, those who have lost jobs, those who are hopeless. Father, I want you to pray, Lord God, for those who are thinking now, as I speak, Lord, they are thinking about suicide, thinking about giving up. I want to pray, Lord God, Father, you will speak to them, Lord. You will send someone, Lord God, that will convict them and convince them. The goodness of life, Lord, of the sanctity of life. And I will give them hope, Lord God, in these depressing times. Father God, I pray for us as the children of God in this country. And Lord God, we will use every opportunity, Lord, to spread your word. To share your goodness with others. We we'll use every opportunity, Lord God, to calm those who are panicking. To present hope, Lord God, to those who are in despair. To help those who are in need. Father God, I pray for our government, Lord. Grant them the spirit of wisdom, Lord God, and proper judgment. Father God, I pray that they will remember that you are the one who causes governments to rise or fall. It's like you did with Nebuchadnezzar. You can do it again. I pray you remind them, Lord God. They are not in power, but they are under your power, Lord. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that Father, you will help us as a church, as a congregation, Lord, to be faithful, Lord, to love you, to love each other, Lord God, to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Enable us, Lord God, to fulfill our mandate here on earth, Lord, to do as you did, Jesus Christ, seek and save the lost. Father, be with us now as we worship. Pray, Lord God, that the smoke of our worship 
will go up to you, Lord, as a sweet smelling savior. Forgive us of our sins, Lord God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, I pray and crave your presence with us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jackson. At this time, we want to invite everyone to be have been turned into a prayer session. Invite to be singing praises to the Lord wherever you are. Those here, ask you to stand and um, prepare and try to speak in the worship of our Lord. Amen. Good morning, Lord. I'm very glad to be standing.
and to rejoice, you know, with people and encourage them. But one of the things that I love my brethren, well, maybe you say you hate it, I don't know. But when I reach where I'm going, and I'm finished, I want to get back home. I don't like a hurry. Seriously. Seriously. When I go within a week, I want to return. I love my home. I love my wife. <laughs> I love me and home, believe me. I love that. So when I when because of COVID, five and a half months in Antigua, wow, that was something else. The adjustment had to be made. Had to be made. Today, Paul is imploring you and me, and he's calling to us. He says right here in the scripture, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. Right there, he calls us ambassadors for Christ. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God was making his appeal to us. We are Christ's ambassador. Now to be an ambassador, you have to be a representative of a country. Of your government. You represent what the government believes. You pass on that as you travel to another country. And as ambassadors, Christ representative here on earth, this earth is a foreign country to us. This world is a foreign country to us. We must understand that, my brethren. The same way that an ambassador would go to a foreign country and represents the government thereof is the same way we need to see ourselves as ambassadors for Jesus Christ in a foreign country. We are strangers, so to speak. Peter says, 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12 says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which are against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagan that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. We are aliens and strangers. We are immigrants on this earth. Though we may be born physically, my brethren, the fact that we are born spiritually in God's kingdom, we have translated. We have moved our home from this world to a world beyond this. And so what God has done through Jesus Christ, he says, now, you are my ambassadors. You are my representative. You represent the higher echelons of all rulership and government in this world. You represent God. You are a representative of God. So you are not mere mortals. You do not, although we are flesh, we do not belong to this world, although we are in the world. And so we need to get it into our heads, my brethren. We need to understand that as Christians, as children of God, we represent God. We represent Jesus Christ. We represent our Savior. We represent our Creator. We represent our God. Our God. He says, we are strangers on this earth. We need to get it. 
We need to get them. Because one of the marks or characteristics of an ambassador, my brethren, is that the ambassador must be a citizen or a citizen of the country he represents. A citizen of the country he represents. So you don't find a Jamaican government sending an American to represent Jamaica on the world scene. No, you find a Jamaican to represent Jamaican. So what God has done, God declare us we are citizens of heaven. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 tells us that. That as a citizen of heaven, my brethren, we represent God, we represent heaven and every protocol that goes along with heaven, with God. But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from here, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship, my brethren, though we are called Jamaicans, though we are in this world, Spiritually, because we're adopted by the mighty God. We are made children of God. We are now citizens of heaven. I don't know about you, my brethren, but for me, that's glory. For me, it tells me that no matter what happens to me here on this earth, I have my hope to go to. I have my country to go to. Yes. It reminds me of what, what Hebrew says regarding Abraham and all the faithful. That if they were looking for a country here on earth and a citizen, a city here on earth, they would have continued searching and seek to find it. But they look forward to something beyond this. And through faith eyes, they believe God. Amen. They believe God. They believe God. Oh, as we look back in Corinthians chapter 5, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. A true ambassador must be in Christ, must be a citizen of Christ, where Christ comes from. It must be somebody who's a new creation, who has been redeemed, who has been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And through that washing, God has adopted us. God has made us his children. And now we are made children of God, citizens of heaven. Amen. Citizens of heaven. As a citizen of heaven, my brethren, we must not only bear the position, but also as we bear the name, we must live out of that name. We must, we must, as a citizen of heaven, we must be above reproach or blameless. We must be above reproach or blameless. We must. You don't find the Jamaican government, you know, looking for one of the top guns of the criminal world here in Jamaica and send him out as ambassador. No. You find, my brethren, that that person's character, that person's life must be one that is above reproach. People cannot be pointing finger at that person. No, this person must have integrity, credibility. This person, honey, must be honest. And as citizens of this heavenly country, we must be above reproach. The scripture says that the old is gone and we are now new creation. The old sinful ways is gone. And now we are made new creatures in Christ. 
We are made, we are made Christians. We have been washed, we have been cleansed. And we are now new creatures, a new creation in Christ Jesus. As a new creation in Christ Jesus, we must understand, dear brethren, that the scripture says, as God is holy, we must be holy. As God is holy, because we are representative of heaven, we are representative of Almighty God, we must be holy. We must be pure. We must be above reproach. That those who see us will understand who we represent and who we are. They must. They must. We must remember that we represent royalty. Pastor just just finished a series with my eye. <laughs> and he dealt in depthly in that. Who am I? A royal priesthood, priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a people who are set us to God. We represent royalty, and so we can live any and every way as this world is. This world is in constant motion, it changes every single day. Constantly changing. And that's why we must always remember that we are strangers. We are aliens. And we cannot adopt the lifestyle and the way of the world. Because who do we represent? Who do we represent? We represent Jesus Christ. We represent God. We represent His holy, His holy, holy world. When Michael the Archangel comes, he represents God. When Gabriel comes, he represents God. Or when he came to Mary, he represented God. When you and I go out into the world, and my brethren, listen, we are what? Seven over seven billion people. We must be ambassadors to the rest of the world. Because what God wants, God wants you and me to bring the next seven billion to Him. What a God! God is not like America that says, Shut our borders, we don't want anybody else to come in here. God is not like countries like in, in, in North America, Canada, or elsewhere. No! But So we must 
be people of God. We must be people of God. Look what Philippians says, Philippians chapter 2. It says in verse 14 and 15, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. In a corrupt world, in a depraved world, a wicked world, we must be blameless and pure children of God. We must, my brethren, move on to perfection in God. We must remain the light of the world. We must remain on that mountain. We must remain and shine in this dark world of sin. As ambassadors of Jesus Christ, there must be no doubt over your life. Nothing should mar your character. Nothing should stop your lifestyle. Nothing. Nothing. But your life should be lived in pleasing your country, your government, so that you can live the life amongst those who you walk. We need to. Thirdly, we need to understand that an ambassador must be selfless. Selfless, not selfish. Can you imagine a selfish ambassador? Huh? And that ambassador goes to the UN. And that ambassador says, well, I represent myself. And I want to speak my mind today. And I want to tell you what I believe and what I think. No. An ambassador must communicate with the end of his country or her country. Must and what he gets or what she gets, they relate to the other countries, to the other government, to the other people. So we must be selfless. And what does this selflessness mean? It means we must be loyal, totally loyal to our country, to our government. We must be. Yes, my brethren, we must be. Because that ambassador must look after the interests of his king, of his government, of his God. Galatians 2.20. Look what Paul says. <laughs> And this should be our attitude. This should be us determined. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul says, I have subsumed so that Christ can be elevated. It is no more I who live. I have given up all my rights. I have given up all my privileges. I have given up all so I can represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am dead to this world. The things of this world don't allure me anymore. They don't entice me anymore. I don't run after them anymore. I am dead with Christ Jesus. I am. So whatever Christ says, the way Christ lives, whatever Christ does, I must do also. I must do also. 
No wonder Jesus Christ says in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 16, 24 and 25. I like it. Because this is where Jesus was challenging those who would follow him. Those who, those who would come after him. Those who say, yes, I want you as my savior. Then Jesus said to his disciples, we are Christ's disciples. We are learners and followers of Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. So we can say, then Jesus said to his ambassadors, whoever wants to be my ambassador must deny himself and take up their cross and follow me. Deny yourself. You're going to say no to yourself. Oh, that's difficult. For, for me to say no to my desires, for me to say no to the things that bring me pleasure, for me to say no to the things that would satisfy me and cause me to be elevated in this world, he said, you must say no! Deny yourself! And if you are going to be selfless, my brethren, you must recognize the fact that Jesus Christ is our Savior, Jesus Christ is our Lord, and we obey our Lord and follow His commands, follow His will. You know, some of us really want Jesus to be our Savior, but our Lord, no. Because if He's Lord and He's Master, you must follow your Master as servants. We must say no, no to our flesh, no to our feeling, no to the things that we feel like will elevate us in this world and deny Jesus Christ. No, instead of denying Christ, let us deny self. Let us put self on the meat. Let us bear self so that Christ can be elevated in our body, in our life, so that we will be true representative of Jesus Christ. We must be. We must be. So the next time, ambassadors, when the flesh cry out, when, 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 when the ambassadors of this world said, come, let go go here. That's not heaven's fault. So you represent it. You represent God. You represent God. I want to look at the last mark, a characteristic. Because an ambassador, my brethren, he must be or she must be a diplomat. <laughs> you know, way back when, when a particular brother used to come up with words, we coin a word, you know? it is not in the dictionary yet. <laughs> a diplomat. That person on disciplinary. That person is a dignitary as well as a diplomat. Yeah. That person represents high office. And as a diplomat, we are not going to look at the many benefits. But one of the benefits of a diplomat is when you travel, then you are able, you don't join the line. You don't go as a, so to speak, the average person live. You go up front and you represent. And as brethren, as diplomat, Diplomacy is the art of negotiation. We have no wisdom of our own. And we certainly, my brethren, do not have the wisdom needed to win souls and to represent God in this world. But what we do, we have God's promises. And I want us to understand that we need to know 
the protocol, the instruments that has been prepared for the diplomat, we need to know them ins and outs. We need to know them. It's a stupid diplomat who doesn't know anything about his country. Huh? When he starts or when she starts about her country, about the protocols of her country, about the citizenship of her country, and what makes a person a citizen, it's a stupid diplomat that doesn't know that. And so, my brethren, God doesn't want stupid diplomats to represent you. He wants wise people. Diplomats who know exactly what he's all about, what the kingdom is all about, and how he or she can negotiate in a man that is presented to God. James chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that if we are in this embassy here on earth and we do not know exactly what to say, what to do, we need to communicate with our head. We need to talk to our head. If any of you lacks wisdom, if any of you don't know what the kingdom represents, if any of you don't know what God says, what God represents, it says that we must go to him and ask of him so that he can give us the wisdom, the necessary tool that we need here on earth to represent him well. Because he gives generously and he does not find fault. This is one government that is willing to make you the best of the best representative of this kingdom. You know you are some foolish people. Pastor Jackson said I didn't fly one last week. <laughs> but you are some foolish people. And we need to go to God. We need to go to God. So that the understanding that we need and the knowledge that we need, my brethren, will take us through. Christians, 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 this is the manual. Christians, this is the instrument. This is where we find all protocol regarding holiness, righteousness, truth, living. This is where we find it. This is where we find it. And I want to tell you, though we give you five chapters for the entire week, that's not enough. That's not enough. Read them and go on to the next 50. So that you can know exactly what God wants from world doesn't know anything about God. Not Christian and know nothing about God. They hear about him. But the fact that you and I can sit under him, you and I can listen to what he said. As a matter of fact, look at this next scripture, man. Matthew, Matthew 10, 9, um, 19 and 20. This is what Jesus Christ is saying to his apostles. This when you go out, and it's when people start persecuting you. And drag you into court when they start mocking you. Don't be perturbed. Don't become anxious. He said, But when they arrest you, do not worry about what you what to say or how to say. At that time, you will be given what to say. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just when you know it. Just when you know it. Look what he says. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's God's Spirit in you using the Word to communicate the message of Almighty God. 
God. Because the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. So when the world is all huffed and puffed and in a rage, a soft answer turns to him. That's the close. You are here to negotiate. You are here to reconcile. That's the message. We won't go into that even today. Because we have marks and we have a message. Yeah? We won't go into that. But listen. The fact is that the diplomacy says we want peace. We come to peace. Today, you are no peasant. You are no power. You represent royalty. Oh, are you right? Every single day, Christine. Every single day, church. You represent royalty. You represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You represent God. You, you represent Christ Jesus. That's who you represent. That's who you represent. And so today, Let's go to um, um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20, where I hear it. This is what Paul says. Though Paul was in prison as a rapper, for which I am an ambassador in chains, pray that I may be clear fearlessly as I should. Though Paul was in prison, it did not stop Paul from representing Christ the way he should. Though you have obstacles, though you have difficulties, though the circumstances, circumstances of life may not be the best, remember who you represent. Remember who you represent. You represent God. You are right. You have all the streets. You have all the marks of Jesus Christ. So who are you? Who are you representing to? If it's not Christ, if it's not he, if you are not a citizen of heaven, then you can't represent Christ. All that you are saying, you have to become selfish to represent Jesus. So if you have any doubt today, I pray that we make a recommitment. If we are not living as ambassadors, I pray that we will stop. If we do not know the manual, I pray that we will start reading the manual. Start reading what God wants. So that God, our government, can and will be proud of us. I pray that you will be for God today. God bless you. The message today that we heard is a message that gives us an opportunity to evaluate our standards. The line has been drawn. Are you for Christ or are you against him? Jesus made it clear in his word that there is no middle ground. That if you are not children of God, you are children of the devil. And that is clear as nine colors in. So we have to represent for our Lord and Savior. And that is represented in the life that we live. Please stand as we receive our invitation. And as we see, let us so examine ourselves.
Good morning. Can you turn with me to to um thirty three? No one hits no no thirty three. Sorry, no eleven thirty three. Um, no one lights a lamp then hides it under um, and hides it or puts it under a bowl. Instead, he puts the lamp set so that people may see the light that comes in. Your eyes are like a lamp for the body. When your eyes are so, are so the whole body is full of light. When your eyes are no good, your whole body will be in darkness. Make certain that the light you that is in you is not darkness. If your whole body is full of light, with no part in darkness, it will be bright all over, as when a lamp shines with it, shines you with brightness. Brethren, darkness is something that we don't really like, huh? I remember as a youngster, um, when I went to camp, and at night, if you didn't have a flashlight, you're in trouble because the road that you would walk on is not smooth and, 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 and pretty. So you would often walk your toe and, and stumble. And sometimes rain fell and it's muddy, not a nice thing. But that was not some of the consequence of walking in darkness. You don't. You, you are uncertain of what, of what you see or, or, or the path ahead of you. But when you walk in light, and as the word of God says, you are able to see. And as Christians, we need to remember that we are children of light and not of darkness. Amen? Amen. And so because we have the light of Christ, we must always let that light flow from us and shine from us. Brightly, right? There's a word in song that says shine bright like a diamond. But Christians need to shine even brighter than diamonds. Amen? Amen? Because we have the light of Christ. Let us not allow all the things of the world to bear us down and to dim our lights and to allow our lights to, um, to not shine brightly. The word of God says that when when our lights are not shining brightly, your body is affected. Not only your body is affected, but the body of Christ is also affected. Because your life should also reflect Christ. Amen? So we have to remember that it's not only us, but the body of Christ. So let us shine our lights brightly. And let us be good ambassadors. But what is spoke about being ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors. And therefore, we need to represent Christ to the fullest. And, and, and in doing so, our lights will indeed shine bright. Let us go forth this week and let our lights shine before men so that they can indeed see the good works of the Father in us. Let us pray for the enemies. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and the privilege we have, dear Lord, to shine brightly as your ambassadors. I pray, dear Lord, that we may go forth, that we may never forget our goal and our purpose is to represent you and to serve you to the fullest. Forgive us, Lord, when we have fallen short. And help us, dear Lord, just to do our best in shining that light bright throughout. Father, bless these emblems that represent your body and your blood. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Right now, this particular service is a little overwhelming. Please remember that um, we need to take this other service. Other services generally um, almost empty. So we urge you to tap some of you. We have we, we practice the week on week on. We urge you to resume that. Alright? Okay. Alright. Those are the announcements. I want to thank you all for coming. Was it good to be here? Yes. Great. Youth Fellowship, um, Friday at 5 o'clock. Please remember, young people, Youth Fellowship at 5 on Fridays. All right, let's close in prayer and then let us stand and then we'll close in prayer and then we'll see the dogs out. Father, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your many blessings. Lord, dismiss us now as we go and cover us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God for